Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Got a little machining job I uh, thought you guys might enjoy uh, watching today. Uh, it's not a really big job, but I think it'll be kind of interesting. Uh, so what I've got here are some parts off of a uh, Dara James uh, table saw. And uh, these are for a friend of mine uh, that is in the process of trying to restore this machine as well as make some improvements to it because uh, this particular model had a design flaw in it, I guess is the best way to put it, in that uh, there's, there's two uh, rods in here, screws in here, that adjust the elevation of the blade as well as the tilt of the blade uh, that have to spin, but because of the weight of the motor and everything that is on this, there's an awful lot of force that's on these. And basically there was just a little spacer in here, a piece of steel that was being used as a, as a thrust bearing on it. And uh, over time it just wears out. And uh, the idea is that we're going to actually modify this and put an actual thrust bearing um, in this area uh, that will hopefully actually allow it, instead of to wear, to actually spin on that bearing. So let's zoom you in here and I, I'll kind of give you an idea of what we've got to do and uh, kind of share with you a little bit of the plan uh, moving forward. So just kind of give you an idea of what the original setup is. We'll just, we'll just look at this one right here. They're both basically the same design. Uh, the rods are a little bit different lengths, but you've got the uh, screw in here uh, that the elevation screw, or let's see, this one's actually the tilt screw. And it goes up and there's this little block. It's just a little steel spacer in there. And this piece, it basically fits up on that. Uh, this uh, round piece goes up into a hole in the casting that allows us to, to pivot. Uh, but basically, this piece right here is bearing all the thrust. Uh, and that that's basically becomes the thrust bearing, is uh, this little piece right here. So um, I've got a couple of uh, thrust bearings uh, that I purchased. And let's uh, get one out here so you can kind of see it. So um, this is the actual bearing that we're going to put in there. And you can see you got little ball bearings in here, or maybe not ball bearings, or roller bearings. Uh, but that little piece will fit in between uh, this. And uh, instead of being steel on steel, we'll have an actual bearing in between there that's going to do it. But there is a small problem. Um, you know, it's not just going to fit right up on here. This uh, thrust bearing is a larger diameter. It's, it's uh, what is it, 15 sixteenths, I think, inch diameter. Uh, whereas this piece here is three quarters of an inch. So the idea is, is that we're gonna actually uh, make a new piece here. It's gonna be a little bit longer than what's in there. And it's gonna start out at three quarters of an inch because it's gotta fit through an, an opening. It's gonna flare out to one inch. Uh, the thrust bearing will go in here. And we'll kind of do the same thing on the back side here. We'll have a piece that goes out, flares out to one inch, and uh, we'll actually have to cut a little bit of this material down to make room for this modification. So I've got a little chicken scratch drawing over here. Um, and if you want to kind of see it, this is kind of what we're looking at, at making. Uh, and I've got some rough dimensions on there. And quite honestly, we're just going to be making this thing to fit. Um, and as I get going on it, I can kind of see what we need to do. But that's the plan, uh, and hopefully that will solve at least one of the problems we got to deal with this saw. Uh, and then there's another issue that will probably be another video uh, at a later date uh, to take care of another problem with this saw. But let's go ahead and get started on this thrust bearing modification. So we're going to make this out of a piece of one inch stock. I believe this is some 1214 um, steel. I'm trying to remember. It's actually a fairly new piece of steel I got. A uh, nice piece. Should be fine for this project. I've got my uh, collet chuck up on here for this job. Um, I don't have too many uh, 22J collets to fit this thing, but I happen to have a one inch, uh, which comes in handy a lot. So uh, I, instead of using a three jaw or four jaw, whatever, we're just gonna use the collet chuck to uh, make this go quick. And uh, game plan, we're gonna come in here, we'll face off uh, the front of this. We'll come in here, we're gonna drill a half inch hole, which is the size of a uh, shaft that goes up through this. I'm going to turn down an area down here about three quarters of an inch, or not about, but three quarters of an inch uh, in diameter and about three quarters of an inch long. And then we're going to basically just flare that out to the one inch mark and uh, then we'll part it off. 
and I should have the bottom half of uh, what will become that thrust bearing. So let's do it. So we've got the first piece made, um, and basically what I need to do now is make a, another one of these, but this one I don't want as long. I want it to be kind of stubby, uh, just enough to flare it up uh, to this uh, larger diameter. Um, so we'll make another one of those real quick, and we'll go test them out and see how they look. I've made two sets of these. I made the second set off camera. You guys saw the, the gist of what we were doing and you can kind of see what we're doing here. So this is the original thrust bearing that was in there if you want to call it such. And um, you can see what we've come up with. So we got this little extension. It's got a long piece here because there's got, it's got to clear a uh, cast iron boss that this fits up into uh, that's, you know, will come out a little bit farther. So um, that should give us the clearance there flares up, gives us a nice bearing surface. We got that um, uh, um, thrust bearing actually in between it on this one, and then it necks back down to roughly the diameter of the shaft. Now, uh, the next thing we've got to do though is uh, we do need to go ahead and modify this. So this shaft, I think it's uh, 5 8 and uh, it's turned down to half inch. But, uh, you know, originally we just had this much space in here. Now we got a much bigger area in here. So what I need to do is I need to turn this down uh, to half inch on both of these, a little bit farther down. We've got plenty of clearance. There's not, no reason we can't do that. Uh, but we need to put these on the lathe and actually turn them down. And I need to do some calculations to figure out exactly how much more material we need to take out uh, to keep these the same length. Because there's hand wheels on the ends down here uh, that we need to keep in relationship to where everything's at. So uh, back to the lathe. Uh, this is going to probably be a little tricky to get these turned down uh, just simply because uh, there's no center holes in the ends of either one of these uh, shafts that I'm working on. So getting these running true, particularly this one here, 
uh, where I'll basically have just got thread, Acme thread to, uh, to chuck on. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, I'm suspecting this is going to be a challenge, but we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get that dialed in uh, on the lathe and running true so we can go ahead and get those turned down. So I uh, put this in the lathe and I just put that in the regular scroll chuck, uh, self-centering chuck. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of run out out here on the end. Up here close to the front, it's running really true. And for what I'm doing, this is good enough. I'm not going to fuss with it. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and turn that down to half inch. All right, I've got an indicator set down here on my carriage. You can't see it, but it will tell me how deep I need to go. And I need to cut 950 thousandths uh, in depth. And uh, we're just going to blend it into that half inch uh, that's already in there. So here we go guys, uh, the finished product on both of these and uh, I think this is going to work just fine. Um, we now have, a, instead of just a spacer in here where all the, the thrust is being borne down on there and you can see where that has worn over the time, you know, we now have a actual thrust bearing um, in between there and I don't think on either one of these that this added length or this little extra of a uh, diameter down here is going to interfere with anything based on uh, feedback I'm getting from uh, the guy I'm working on this for. So anyway, this part of the job, uh, we're going to call it done. So part one of this job, uh, all finished up. Uh, again, I think this is going to work just fine. So uh, anyway, on to the next part. So uh, we will have a part two this episode and i uh, give you a little teaser. Uh, on the other end of this, where the Acme threads are, there's a threaded uh, boss, similar to the other one, that has an internal uh, Acme thread, 5 8 8 Acme. And um, the original ones were made out of brass. And uh, in the early saws, they were made out of brass, but they quickly found this to be a design flaw as the brass strips out, uh, as this nut here has done. Later saws that they made, uh, these were made out of steel. And uh, that's what we're going to do next is we're going to make a set of these out of steel and do some internal Acme threading. So stay tuned for that. They'll be coming up soon.